Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Connell Work. I'm Ringru. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are giving you more SD2 League action today. Today we are Asha Chedron, right? Who's coming to this fray and what are they bringing to it? On the left hand side in the blue, we have AS playing as the 5th Romanian Cavalry Division with a Maverick income right hand side in the red. We have Save the Mustang playing 1st Polis Infantry with a very flat line income. You know, early on here, we're going to see this rinky dink little uh, biplane. You know, and, and I have such a soft spot in the same way that he's got no protection whatsoever that we have things like a well, biplane that gets to kind of enjoy himself. You know, he, he can throw down some bombs here and there. It's not going to happen very yeah. often, but it's a lot of fun nonetheless. But not right now, though, as we're seeing Save the Mustang opening up with an anti aircraft gun. And on that hill, he has a lot of Maxims, a lot of field guns, and there's going to be a few dead Romanians here, mainly as anti tank gun. So, tank rifle. With the 5th Romanians, what should we be expecting over here, sir? Uh, the division we don't see all that often. Uh, they're pretty They're pretty good. they got some nice infantry, you know, not a whole lot of tanks for anti-tank, decent air power. Kind of like a like, Romanian-style infantry division, all things considering. So it should be a pretty good matchup against the first pose. Well, you know, tell you what's not going to be a good matchup is when that Yak goes after that Henschel up here. He might. I think he's got. Yeah, he got one bombing run off, which is going to absolutely obliterate this SU-76. I believe. Excuse me, just 76. Um, <laughs> but don't know that he's going to make it out alive here. Here comes the Jack. And a deflection shot. I'm really surprised. He's, yep, there we go. It's like there we go. Down he goes. But yeah, Northern does. Town. Usually where things get pretty heavy, but. Not right now, both sides just have defensive positions with LMG infantry just holding the point. Pretty unproductive. Well, it's kind of justifiable when you think about it. Why would you bring in... Jeez. Oh, he never had a chance. He never had a chance. Why would you bring in that brave, brave biplane? <laughs> that boy deserves a better fate. Uh, run, run those jacks flying about, yeah. And there's no German anti-air, so they're gonna have an absolute field today here. Quite a bit of um, like air power play just right off the bat, and it's working pretty well for Mr. Mustang, especially on his southern flank. He as he is managing to push back to the 12, 12, and probably get a 13 once he gets that one flag in the uh, in the middle of the lungs. Wait, wait, wait. So you're trying to tell me that those airplanes might be the jack of all trades in this case? <laughs> Yes, Khan. Yes, okay. they are. Okay. If they had bombs, that would definitely be an accurate description. Yeah, you know what? I was thinking about that, but um, these guys over here, these are the illest. Or the, the second illest, really. Cluster bombs coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Cluster bombs coming up over here in just a second. And, um, you know, when we get a, a second here, we talked a little bit on Tuesday about the possibility, yep, stroke goes down. Talk about the uh, the possibility. Oh my gosh! Get the biplane away from this. Jeez. No, no. What are you doing? Well, at least the jack is like almost out of ammo. Yeah, but that's not how you play this game. <laughs> oh no! Look, the biplane has like a few defense machine guns. He'd be fine. There's Antia. He'd be fine. He's not fine. No. He's He's no, really no, he's not, not fine. You know, and, and I, uh, I don't want to go disrespect him by quipping anymore about that brave, brave fool. Forced to fly out above, above, uh, you know, above those front lines. Jeez. In any case, you and I were talking a little bit on Tuesday about the idea of having a much more stable 1v1 meta. And we, and we were talking about how much we kind of appreciate more the meta as it is today, as it used to be, you know, even a few months back. What changed to get that kind of you know, pleasurable positioning, do you think? Uh, artillery's just become more useful just because of how uh, the infantry mechanics are working now, which is pretty nice. Infantry gets stunned up pretty quickly. I know balance, even though it's replay, balance income isn't being used as Maverick and Flatline, which is pretty unorthodox. Mm -hmm. I know, it's just like a bunch of like changes with availability as well. 
And I think thinking. mainly it's just it's mainly just came down to how the infantry being played because now you can no longer just charge hordes of infantry out in the open and take ground. You'll get suppressed way too quickly. Shockingly enough, we did just see these armored cars over here do a little bit of like a tank and spank on a T-34. Actually, had shades of, you know, Gonzo to me just a second ago. Hurling a bunch of light vehicles at a, at a you know, much more strong tank and, and, and really just forcing it to uh, bend to their particular will here. Of course, yeah, the Jack I mean, coming in. These are AB-41s, the classic third Fouchager, uh... Well, not the L6, of course, but close oh, yeah. enough. Well, and I feel the 37 mil should be able to blow them to pieces here, but being an anti-aircraft position, he's going to retreat and thereby seal his doom. Yeah. Hey, his ABs are actually coming in really clutch here, securing that hill, allowing time for the infantry reinforcements to be brought in, as well as a stoog. One of only a few strokes here over here. In fact, we have put five overall over the entire match. And I, I almost get the feeling that we're going to see every single one of those brought in and every single one of those probably going to die. I have the same feeling too. Things don't survive in Steel Division 2 if they get brought out in A phase. If it's out in A, it's probably going to be dead by the end of the match. <laughs> Advanced by A, blown apart by B, and, you know, in a casket by C. Sounds about right. <laughs> And you can see the Architects and some of the destruction coming on up here in just a moment. T-34, 76s, BA, 10s. These guys are going to heavily out, out, you know, scale those AB-41s. And I don't care if you have a Stoke coming up behind it. Heck, I don't care if you bring in some of those rinky-dink, you know, Breda anti-tank guns. It ain't going to go well. Yeah. It's it's not. Those it T-34s are going to be a pretty good counter here. You're seeing the ABs actually fall back into a defensive position. Allowing the big brother Stug to protect him. It, it, it allowing the Stug to protect them, but the Stug needs to actually hit something to protect them, so... Bit of a mixed bag there. That's very true. You're already seeing down on the southern hill. AS is starting to move up on there. It's only one Stroke DP squad here, so it should be pretty easy to kick them out. And that should give them another nice flag advantage. And still, the town fight is... Well, it isn't a fight, it's just, you know, both sides are starting to travel from across the street, which is really interesting. Usually with infantry divisions, you know, all over this town fight, pushing back and forth, but it's all over the lungs and all over this, like, southern, like, field. Hill. Like, yeah, more of a hill. It certainly seems to be, anyway. The Armada is going to kind of lumber on forward to, of course, he's being positioned there to go after that Stug. Um, bizarrely enough, I feel like the AB-41s don't know if they're going to be, you know, the greatest of companions over here, but they are forcing back some of this lighter Soviet, excuse me, Polish infantry, not Soviet necessarily. Yeah, they're performing really well. I mean, they're going into this lung here, lung hill. And they can knock out the half tracks, which is nice. They can suppress the infantry to hell and back. And there's not a whole lot of anti-tank rifles nearby as well. So they're going to have a pretty good life expectancy, I think. I am stunned. Not as stunned as, um, you know, that Stug is going to be eventually. But I am stunned that the Romanians right now have a 1410. Same here. It really doesn't feel like it is. Mustang's been hitting pretty hard, but they just got... You know, those two flags down south, I think, is really helping to secure it here. So this really seemed to be the case. I confess this is one of the areas that my kind of scholarship on, on World War II is pretty, pretty lousy. I don't know a lot about the Romanian army. I feel like a lot of the, the firepower that we see here is, is very much kind of cast off German equipment, but that infantry material, worthwhile, or is it just kind of, you know, a hunk of junk? Uh, the infantry is actually pretty good, all in all. I got G43 rifles, if I recall, and it was Rosori infantry, as well as Beretta M30, you know, M38, which is nice. Like, the Romanian infantry is pretty damn good, but apart from that, everything else is pretty average. Nothing, nothing to stand out, apart from, yeah, 75mm anti-tank gun, which is three anti-tank guns rolled up into one. 
Well, the second stroke just went down, and with it, a hefty chunk of the firepower down here south. And, you know, the Carnies, well, these guys are, are, are certainly looking to get started on that midway, moving, you know, east to west here. But it's 15-9. It hasn't gotten any better for the Poles, and indeed has only gotten worse, which is just, again, stunning. I, I don't understand what the heck is going on here. The Poles, while they may not be, you know, the toppest of tiers, they're always a very, very successful division. Yeah, they've always performed very well whenever we see them. It's a great knife fight division with a lovely amount of T-34s, but T-34s have just not been performing that well, and the Romanian infantry can actually give the Poles a run for their money at close quarters, and just a good use of the AB cars. It is firepower in general, really, here from AS, which is curing him his great advantage. And also, even though he doesn't have a lot of tanks, the area he's fighting over, like at Southern Hill and the Lung Hill, you can put some anti-tank guns there and pretty easily hold a position if he can actually get that shut up. True. True. Unfortunately, when you uh, try to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of this equipment, though, you are going to die and you're going to die very, very quickly and horribly. Yeah. This definitely seems to be the case on the Lung Hill here. The ABs are just force and a half tracks back. The T-34s coming in. But the Romanian infantry do have some rather nasty anti-tank grenades, which are pretty magnetic. Uh, that's that's their personality, Frank. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> they just they just draw all of those tanks towards them. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of fascinated to watch this attempt coming up this hillside with the Carnies in the south. This has nothing to do with the lungs. And indeed, if you're looking over here at the center position, you're going to see that it's just going to be a lot more just strafing more than anything else. And geez, do they they force back and. I, I don't understand. Okay. Uh, but, okay, looking down to the south, the AB-41 is going to, for some reason, try to charge in against that Polish infantry before they really wow. are, have a chance to be engaged by the troops on the top of the hill. Yeah, taking that anti-tank rifle for, like, a shot. Uh, taking that anti-tank shot like a champion. If I can actually put my words together correctly... But yeah, these, these AP-41s are surprisingly very nasty, even against infantry, as we're seeing. Part of it is helped by the fact that, until that guy just died, oh. that um, these were already kind of disheartened troops. Like, let's be yeah. fair, they're taking 50% more uh, stress. That's 25, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm For some reason, 50% of the way sounds so much more dire. It feels like it. Yeah, I think this might just be my old hang-up about aerosets trooping. Um... Now, I think I'm a little bit more nervous as now we see SU-85s coming to the front with the SU-76 over here with the p -p panic versions, um, as you can see down here to the southern oh, side. Oh, it's 50%. You're completely correct. I apologize. Folks, I want you to take this down now. This um, is a rare moment here. <laughs> it is. You're going to have to clip this for future. Oh, man. Um, now, I was wondering if we get some speculative infantry to the northern side. Nope. We're going to see Strokies and Rocks being moved back down to the central position. Looking at these lungs. And I'm wondering why the Poles are abandoning all these disheartened troops. Yeah, that's a pretty good question. I mean, these penal troops are pretty damn good, but... I know, just the Romanian defense has been really strong. I don't really... I think it's just the infantry have been trading really well, as we're seeing the lungs. I mean, Superior's going to come in, but I can't say it properly. I'm just going to call them Rosies. Oh, very nasty squatters with the veteran she, the semi-auto rifles, the good SMG. Or not good enough against the central charge, but you get the idea. True. True. I'm just and checking then, to see material coming. I'm sorry, go for it, please. No, it's just like this 15-9 is like brutal here for Mustang. And it just it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, because on paper... Well, you know, paper just reads very differently than, than the actual fighting here. The 122 howitzer, by the way, getting pounded, absolutely pounded, by these 75 mil anti-tank guns. It's actually these triple threat kind of anti-tank guns. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very powerful piece of equipment just due to its multi role use here, you know, 122 being forced to fall back. I mean, Mustang is making another attempt onto the southern hill, but 
you know, we've got the hot, like, goddamn, it's a lot of hot kisses. But it uses some good defenses out of the anti tank guns, and the Romanian armored cars have just been on point in their positioning. I didn't even appreciate how delicious that uh, 75 mil on that hillside is. He's yeah. got a crazy line of sight going into there. And such high penetration, there's really no Polish tank which can survive it. No, not even remotely, you're right. He's gonna die, I'm pretty sure, on this next hit. Oh no, one man still there. Uh, but this, yeah. this is there to finish the job, I'm sure. SU-85 yeah. is on the hillside, but this is, yeah, he very wisely decides that um, he doesn't want any of that shade, and he's just gonna pull back. Yeah, it's best when you don't have a machine gun. Kind of a... I guess on a tank destroyer you can kind of get away with it, but it's still nice to have a machine gun, you know? I'd like a machine gun right now, but I don't have one, so I guess I'm just gonna have to live without it. Jeez, Ryan, on Tuesday was a PP shot, today it's a machine gun, next week it's a howitzer, where does it end? Uh, nuclear weapons. Ah, you're looking for that Davy Crockett, are you? Oh, yes. Stick on top of the car, you know, get through traffic pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that would uh certainly light up your day, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, if I ever need a quick tan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Remember, this end towards the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, speaking look, towards this end, like, look yes. at the long hill. Yes. Uh, Save has made a fantastic counter push here, and this is really what we should be, you know, seeing from the poles, just fighting deadly in the forest. Well, there's lots and lots of fire, lots and lots of fury. Uh, down to the south, not quite the same experience. You know, a little bit different kind of experience down here. Uh, but regardless, maybe we'll see some devastating place somehow swinging around and going after perhaps some of this other equipment i can tell you right now those yoris over here with those long range basically bren knockoffs yeah um, well actually the original to be fair oh no you're absolutely right you know you said that to me at one point and yeah. i i went the other direction with it but you're right sorry the grand the Bren's a more popular the gun so it's a knockoff you know fair enough that's how it works oh that makes sense um well, I was going to talk a little bit more about that, but SU-85 might kill this Stug. No, he doesn't. Rosiori is getting a chance to save his old friend. And then decides, nah. Never mind. I'd no. rather get pinned. 101 meters. I can't throw that far. You know what, man? The Olympics just ended. We can definitely see some people have some crazy, crazy abilities here. And another mm -hmm. Stug goes down. So continuing my theory that by the end of this... Looks like the only one who might cause an issue for that is the stroke to the north. And that's just because he's not trying hard enough to die just yet. Yeah. And this is starting to look actually kind of bad here for AS. I mean, of course, income rise, he's still doing good in his B phase with that lovely Maverick income, but as we've seen C phase roll around the corner, he's going to start running out of income and probably availability. Yeah, he's a very that's... B phase focused deck. Maybe, but he also has carpet bombs. And he's going to lose one of them right now. He's probably going to lose both, honestly, to be fair. But with two bombers, he's going to come in and kill three tanks? No! No, Caster's no. Curse, okay. Oh, wait, it died. Oh, it did? The T-34? Yes, I, I zoomed yeah. away from it, but um, all right. I don't know, I think something killed him, but probably something deadly. It's usually what causes things to die, if I recall. And gee, you would just have to take a dip instead? dead center into that lake, so, you know, he's going out like a champ. You know, I, th I think it was the Stug, the other Stug that kind of came in. Yeah, it's the closest thing you can get to a burial at sea. <laughs> Certainly in the middle of Russia or Poland? Yeah, that's probably yes. pretty true. <laughs> yeah, I'm still amazed up north, it's just been completely static. I don't think anyone's even exchanged, like, the littlest bit of fire. There's been They're a little having a nice old party. There's been a little oh, bit. Okay. There's a Stroki squad has engaged, I think it was a, a, a Rosiori over here. Um, there's been one single death up there. Other than that, yeah. really very minimal engagements. Yeah, we're all seeing a counterattack go on to the lung here from AS with all his nasty uh, pioneer Romanian troops. And I think it should be enough to actually counterattack and get out back under his control, which he really needs to do before C phase so he can get that defense up and running and just kind of hold until relieved, which you have to do with an African come once C phase hits. True, but he's he's starting to get it here. 
I mean, he's got BA tens being brought up. That's going to make his his infantry's life a living misery on the hillside. Of course, all he's got to really do to make that stop is, yep, he's bringing in those ABs a little bit further south. But this should be more than enough to take out the BA tens. Yeah, close range of total cannons are pretty nicey, not nasty, but the BA tens at the same time, pretty good gun. And it helps when you can panic the other guys, so wow, that was not quite the engagement I expected to see happen. Yeah, I was expecting the auto cannons to stress, stress one of them out pretty quickly here, and save the Mustang leading in with the penal troops. But there's Romanian pioneers, and yeah, pretty nasty. Especially when guys are disheartened. That's one. Getting out just barely in time. But they're going to take some devastating losses falling back. Peacewreck squad to the south uh, west of that, though. Going a little bit further down, this rocks Sapiri are just going to cause havoc. Indeed. I feel like this match is going to come down to if Save the Mustang can secure the Southern Hill. I feel like that's going to be it for AS. Because this is such a key defensive location for the southern end of this map. And also for the center of the lungs. Yeah, if he gets kicked off of it, I don't feel like he's going to have the income or forces to actually counter-attack back. By the way, up to the northern side, we are going to see a tentative assault. A couple of ABs. We have that you know, armored car or two moving on in. Going to get pwned, I'm pretty darn sure. But um, getting up close and personal, not sure I'd really be that close. Yeah, your gun gets jammed and your armored car gets blown up. I guess a long last he's going to make some pioneer assaults to kind of to support that. More assault troops being thrown into the southern side, though, too. Um, next wave is moving up the southern hillside. This is probably going to be enough. Yeah, the yeah, armored support, definitely, for sure. But we still have those Romanian pioneers, and we'll save the Mustang. It doesn't have a whole lot of CQC infantry, which I feel like is going to be the one thing stopping him from getting this hill for the time being. And you know what I just realized, too? He's got four minutes on his life. He's oh. only got four minutes to save the world, man. Like, he's he's, he's really, really suffering over here. That Mustang is not going to be you know, running free very long. No, he is not. He really needs to uh, pick up the pace and gallop on towards victory somehow. He's doing pretty well. He's picked up two flags already. Like you said, that hillside is very, very good for him. But with the Rosiores over here, we have... Basically, more and more of AT than, than I expected to, you know, consistently find. Yeah. Two yeah, kills. I think... <sighs> Jeez. And all of these light anti tank and light vehicles, and heck, even this rinky dink little BS <laughs> <laughs> AT grenades. This could be enough to throw back this push. Yeah, it's just quite surprising. Like, the Romanian infantry are nothing to sneeze at, as we're seeing here. Of course, the lack of anti-tank. Oh, I think that's going to be it for for that hill. The Romanians have fallen back because they can't do anything against T-34s. We have a whole heap of Polish infantry coming in to take our place, and our Save Mustang has a little bit of time now, a seven-minute bleed, so... I mean, the lung heal is not looking great, and I feel like if AS makes a push up north, which he definitely can do, just looking at the force disparity, that could buy some time. And well, AS needs time. But he needs the time to be short. It certainly does. But I feel like if he takes his T-34 to the southeast of this bridge, that's enough to get another flag right there. Not going to get both of those, but it's enough to get at least one of those flags. And I feel like that, that needs to be the kind of kind of consistent thing going on here. Ooh. We have a TOT barrage coming in. Yep, that's from the IAR off-map auxiliary. And this would be a pretty nasty barrage here. Might just be enough for AS to do a counter-attack. I think the Pioneer's probably going to die before the barrage actually does the damage. Maybe. But the Stokes are oh, still the there, Stokes. too. Now, the issues about here, here is the T-34s that are flanking from pretty much every direction. One's down already.
And while the Romanians may have a Rosaria, so they, they, they might be, you know, able to definitely divert some of that damage. Oof, yep, Stoke goes down. All of that Soviet infantry, I keep saying Soviet, Polish infantry, is getting hammered, though, too. Yeah, they're, they're going to be back. forced to fall back, and this is going to give AS time to get in his new infantry platoon up and running, and onto the hill. Of course, the main problem still, he doesn't have much anti-tank, which is proven to be a pain, but if he can get back onto that hill, he just needs to hold on for like five minutes or so. Well, if you look to the northern side, there is Bro. a bit of a push going on here. Bro, indeed. This is like great for Save the Mustang. Like, those two flags are pretty crucial. That's going to buy him quite a bit of time here, and I wonder if AS would actually bother to counterattack. He definitely has the scariest CQC troops if he can move them up, but not much. Well, he has the one stuck here, which he needs to use to try and knock out our BA-10, which is killing his pioneers. Well, and that's T-34. If he turned on his 45 mils. Oh. Oh, yeah, they're on a fission shot. Now's not the time to be efficient. Now's the time to be wild. Exactly. Profligate wasting of ammunition. Now is that time. Um, there is going to be a, an artillery barrage being called down to the south in the middle of nowhere. Northern side, though, yep, we're going to see another... What the deuce? I always forget that these things have cluster HE. Meanwhile, down to the... Okay, so, okay, those a, those AT guns are finally firing. Bouncing like crazy, knocking out transmissions and all that, but uh, regardless, at least they're engaging. Yeah. This is getting, like, it, it still feels like both sides can win, just due to how the north and south are just developing right now. Yeah, southern f hill is going to go over to AS here. And so is that northern bridge one that I was talking about. So, if you can hold on for 21 seconds, I would say this is over. Yeah, knocking out those two flags will give him that plus two advantage, which will pretty much secure him the game. You know, the Pioneer Soldiers just getting some fantastic kills. I mean, a few of the Strelchki DP squads are going to get out of the barrage range, but the Doesn't majority matter. of the forces are just going to get blown up to smithereens. This is going to be game right here. And and very, very well played. I, I Folks, honestly, before we started, I said to Ryan, I was like, I'm not feeling the Romanians today, man. I was... <laughs> I was skeptical. I was very yeah. skeptical. Wow. This Indeed. I'm not saying I'm a believer. I will never be a believer. But I might be a believer <laughs> in the remaining ability to kind of wage war in this game. I am very, very impressed with how this went. Yeah, and, and with how our um, previous in, previous replays of first pose, and we've seen a lot of first pose replays, they usually perform extremely well, but... I mean, the Romanians' 5th Cav is a pretty nice division. They're, they're kind of similar to Poles in a way, where they're good knife fighters. Uh, they have a decent long range of uh, 75 mils and stugs, to be fair. But the infantry is just, like, surprisingly very effective on mm -hmm. the Romanian side. And they have just some fun fun equipment, which I, which I like seeing being used, you know? Very hodgepodge, and I love hodgepodge divisions. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a soft spot in the heart for group, you know, group heart neck kind of stuff. You know, gross Paris kind of Finland. material. Finland. Exactly. Yeah, just just what what the Germans have given us. What things have the French, which have got captured from the Germans, can we have? Can we use any of the Soviet equipment that we captured? Just we just need to make do with what we got, because by God, the Red Horde is all red tide is coming. I say the Mustang. I might be wrong with this too. That looks like it's like a crossier. Hmm. Like a, I don't know, it reminds me of like a Hussar. Mate, you know what, you're right, it is like more fun I am digging that, that avatar though, so. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Really, really well done over here from AS. That was not how I expected that to go, even remotely. And you can even see, a lot of light vehicle kills have happened over here from the poles. They've done a lot of anti-vehicle, a lot of anti-air. Heck, taken out several strokes as well, but at the end of it, not able to fully... I would say stop those light vehicles before they did the necessary damage. Yeah. And then losses here, the Romanians. I mean, one was already squad doing decent. But apart from that, no real standout. Everyone's just been performing pretty mediocre this recon. No, no crazy kill lists to snip and put on the Reddit. 
But, you know, it's one of those things I think is kind of good. Every now and again, you just want to have that nice kind of team game. You don't want to have someone who's just crazy, just constantly being ridiculous. It's good. Yeah, it everyone is... did their part. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, any final thoughts then, sir? Uh, no, on that replay, but it was, just, yeah, it was a good bloody replay. Uh, great job to both sides. It truly, truly was. Well, folks, I think that's going to do it for us in terms of our coverage this week of SD2 League play. As always, want to share any more thoughts, we're happy to go and feature your perspectives. But uh, I guess until next week, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.